Greeting! Hi, this is Pastor Jimmy. God bless you and keep you. Today's words of God that Lord wants to share is the book of Isaiah, chapter 10. Uh, this is a very uh, amazing chapter that leads you to uh, chapter 11, which is promise of a Messiah. Uh, to experience the messianic revelation within our daily lives, is to understand that God is with us. No matter what you are going through, what we are going through. Uh, even in the midst of tribulations, issues that bring us despair in our lives, the events that make you feel like you are at the end of life so disastrous that takes all the hopes away. Yes, someone can be, or, or you or, or I, we can be in certain situation like that. But still, God wants us to know that our mighty God is in absolute control. Amen? So let us not sway by environment or whatever that we are going through. But let us look up, you know, have a faith <laughs> with the determination if God allow us to go through. Amen. With God from beginning to the end. And God will give us hope again. As long as we are willing to subdue to God, as long as we are willing to obey God and trust God, no matter what we are going through, <laughs> God is in absolute control. Amen? Yes. You get it? Uh, Isaiah chapter 10. Let's get in. Woe to those who make unjust law, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of, the, of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, making widows their prey and robbing their fatherless. What will you do on the day of a reckoning when disaster comes from afar? To whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your riches? Nothing will remain but to cringe among the captives or fall among the slain. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. So if God decides wrath to certain people, no matter what they think they have, whatever they have will never save them. Because God already has decided. So let's say if, if you have committed sin and I have committed sin. So we cannot blame on anybody. We cannot blame on God. We cannot blame on the world. But it is our fault that the certain disasters on the way. And maybe we are in that disaster. And it is God who allowed that. So how can we avoid that disaster? Because we deserve that, don't we? But God is telling to those, even though they deserve, God wants them to know that God is in absolute control. So, in the midst of the turmoil of hardships, God says, hey, listen, nothing will save you. Nothing. So accept it. But do not accept it as you are going to die. But accept it as that you are going through the punishment. But look up to God. Yes, because this will end. 
when the punishment is ended, <laughs> salvation will come. But do not forget that all things, all things in absolute control by God. Wow. If you are not the one who trusts God, this could be so disappointing, isn't it? Because nothing will save you. But if you, if you believe that it is also God who allowed this turmoil, <laughs> you have a hope. Yes, you have a hope. Because now you can pray to God, you can repent, or if you cannot even understand why this disaster is upon you, but at least know that God is, God is in absolute control. So you, we may look up to God and say, Lord, let this turmoil pass through. <laughs> let me have a hope in you, Lord. Not, not on anything else. Not on a, a, a people or, or persons or things that I, I think I have. Let me not look at the other escape route, but you, God. You are my refuge. Then this is what God says continuously in verse 5. Woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger, in whose hands is the club of my wrath. I send him against the godless nation. I dispatch him against the people who anger me. To seize loot and snatch plunder. And to trample them down like a mud in the street. But this is not what he intends. This is not what he has in mind. His purpose is to destroy. To put an end to many nations. Are not my commanders or kings, he says. Has not Kerno fared like a cat Is not... Hemeth like Arpad, and Samaria like Damascus. As my hand sees the kingdoms of the idol, kingdoms whose images excel those of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not deal with the Jerusalem and her images, as I dealt with Samaria and her idols? When the Lord has finished all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, which means after God punishes people of God, so they may return to God. <laughs> With the punishment. See, punishments are not to destroy you, but it is to make you humble and return to God. At least this is what God says to you and I. If we belong to God, even the punishments from God, it is a helping hand. Yes. It is like a last call. For us to re return to mighty God. And beginning of chapter 10, God says, Because we, we forgot to help and save the oppressed, <laughs> we were too busy maintaining our status quo. Never paid enough attention to those who are unfortunate. But always pay more attention for fattening our own calves. <laughs> calves. Fattening our own desires. And we were forgetting that we are people of righteousness. So God had to deal with So when we finally repent to see the heart of God, why we are children of God on earth, why we were saved to live the life of righteousness, 
rather than just pursuing our own fantasies. <laughs> then, whatever, whoever that God used to persecute the people of God, then God will turn to those who God used as weapons against us <laughs> or tools to teach us. God will punish them to show us that it is not their superior who was oppressing us. It was not their uh, uh, massive power and, and, and dominance that was killing us. But there was simply a tool of God's punishment towards us. So we may humble ourselves. So God is teaching us, hey, whatever that's oppressing you, I don't want you to be afraid of that. Or I don't want you to be afraid of those. But I want you to look up unto me, which is God. And turn back. Even though you are in punishment of God, you are in love and God is in love with you. So you may come back to God. When the Lord has finished all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the king of Assyria for the willful pride of his heart and the haughty look in his eyes, for he says, By the strength of my hand I have done this, and by my wisdom, because I have understanding, I remove the boundaries of the nation, I plunder their treasures. Like a mighty one, I subdue their kings, as one reaches into a nest. So my hand reached for the wealth of the nations, as men gather abandoned the eggs, so I gathered all the countries. Not one flapped the wing or opened its mouth to chirp. Does the ex? So after God hears their ridiculous comments, this is, this is what God says. Does the axe raise itself above him who swings, swings it? Or the saw boast against him who uses it? As if a rod were the wield him who lifts it up. Or club brandish him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty will send the wasting disease upon his sturdy warriors. Under his pump. A fire will be kindled like a blazing flame. The light of Israel will become a fire, the Holy One a flame. In a single day it will burn and consume his thorns and his briars. The splendor of his forest and fertile fields it will completely destroy. As when a sick man wastes away and the remaining trees of his forest will be so few that a child could write them down. <laughs> wow. You know, some nations or some uh, uh, force that God is using to do God's will in history of mankind. You know, we tend to study that the Roman Empire, Assyrian Empire, Babylonian Empire, Roman Empire, whatever it is. And we, we, we may talk about greatness of them and how fierce they were. But God is saying that, hey, my people, my children, those were the, just the tools that I use to, to guide you and wield you and, and make you and form you and just to let you know that I am your God. But people of unfaith, <laughs> people who do not have a faith, 
may never figure it out. You know, even those who thought that they were in power, how foolish were they? Even though God was using them and they, they, they didn't realize, they were not realizing that they were in the hands of God. They were thinking that Hammer was a thinking that, oh, look how strong I am to break these things. But isn't God who was handling the hammer? <laughs> See, weapons are no weapon itself. They're just simply being handled by God. So God is telling us, hey, do not pay attention to the people or things in the historical facts or even in your lives, whatever disaster that you may go through. Pay your attention to God. All things will pass. But God won't. So be wise. <laughs> be wise. Have a faith in God. And be the one who stands still before God. Then when time comes, God will raise you back. Amen? Yes. Yes. So after that, God talks about remnant of Israel. In that day, the remnant of Israel, which is verse 20, the survivors of the house of Jacob will no longer rely on him who struck them down, but will truly rely on the Lord. Amen. But will truly rely on the Lord. The Holy One of Israel. So if you are the remnant of Israel, you will no longer focus on the problems, oppressors, your circumstances, environments. You will no longer Rely on him who struck you down. But will truly rely on the Lord. The Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return. The remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty God. Hallelujah. Yes. So let us return to God. Amen. Though your people, O Israel, be like the sand by the sea. Only a remnant will return. Destruction has been decreed, overwhelming and righteous. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, will carry out the destruction decreed upon the whole land. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty says. Oh, my people who live in Zion, which is Mount of God, Mount of God which means... The people who are willing to stay with God, no matter what the circumstances, who do not forget to worship God. Oh, my people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian who beat you with the rod and lift you up club against you as Egypt did. Very soon my anger against you will end. And my wrath will be directed to their destructions. The Lord Almighty will lash them with the whip. As when he struck down Midian at the rock of Oreb. And he will raise his staff over the waters as he did in Egypt. In that day their burden will be lifted from your shoulders. Their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. <laughs> they enter... IF they pass through migrant, they store supplies and mikmash, they go over to pass 
and say, we will camp overnight El Geba. Rema trembles. Gibeah of Saul flee. Cry out, O daughter of Galim. Listen, O Leisha. Pour an eye of. Madmana is in their flight. The people of Gavin take cover. This day they will halt at no. They will shake their feast at the mount of the daughter of Zion, at the hill of Jerusalem. See, God is telling the people of God that, see, what I'm telling you is, is it's not poem, okay? What I'm telling you is not the idea. This will actually happen. So he, he tells them actual locations and, and places where. See, God is telling you and I through the words of God in chapter 10. See, I know what you are going through, exactly what you are in and where you are. I know every detail. I know what's going on. And I will save you from every corner of your life. I am not just saying this to you, but I am speaking to you with my all authority and heavens and earth. In the name of God, yes. See, remember Jesus says, all the authorities in heaven and earth has given to me. So he was telling disciples, so go ye to the older nations and proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will always be with you if you are obedient disciple of Jesus Christ who are listening and going to preach the good news to the older nations. Amen. And while you are obeying God, all the authorities in heaven and earth with the authority of Jesus Christ you will experience signs and wonders and miracles in your daily lives only because you are listening to God only because you are being obedient to God Amen just like that in Isaiah chapter 10 all the promises of God as, as such as these that says you know what no matter what you're going through I will be your God and I will save you so come back to me return to me and whatever that was oppressing you I will show you that all that will go away every corner every detail I am your God and I know everything about your life So be a remnant of Israel. Stay as a believers. Do not lose your faith. Do not lose your faith. Remain in faith. Amen. Remain in faith. This day, I will save you. <laughs> in verse 33. This day they will halt and know, they will shake their fist at the mount of the door of Zion as the hill of Jerusalem. See the Lord, the Lord Almighty will lop off the boughs with great power. The lofty trees will be felled. The tall ones will be brought low. He will cut down the forest, thickens with an axe. Lebanon will fall before the mighty one. Then, right after that, God talks about Jesus, which is chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of a Jesse. From his roots, a branch will be bare fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. Spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. 
He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. Yes. Jesus, the righteous righteousness of God will be with you. So please, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Turn around from the issues and tribulations that you are facing. But now see God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because today may be the day of salvation that God has prepared for thee. Amen. Yes. Yes, you who are a remnant of Jacob. Remainder of God's faithful children. God bless you and keep you. Shalom.